Welcome everyone to Sand Boot, soon to be making another LUN part three. In part three of this video, we're we'll be moving on to the UCSM configuration section. First, we must create a boot policy that has our sand targets mapped. So here we're gonna give it a name and a description. We'll be adding uh, all four paths to the LUN. This ensures we have connectivity to the LUN in case any connectivity is lost. You might be able to get away with two mappings here, but it's, it's a safe bet to have all four. So we're gonna put all four here. So here we're adding our first HBA FC0, then we're gonna add the second FC1, and then we're gonna add those targets to each HBA. So we have a primary and a secondary target for each HBA. Here we have our handy dandy notepad that has these initiators. <laughs> PWWN's already there. Obviously in this case, this is the target PWWN. <laughs> so put those in there. It's a lot easier than typing it out. Also saves you from having any typos. We're adding the primary and secondary to the FC1 now, or the targets. Okay, once it's complete, we need to assign this uh, boot policy to a service profile. <clears throat> In this case, we're gonna assign it to an existing service profile that's been deployed from a template. We could just have easily added it to a template and deployed service profiles containing the boot policy to available unassigned blades, but in this case, since the service profile was already deployed, we're simply going to modify the existing service profile. After we click apply, we get a warning here that it is going to reboot the blade. Be aware of that. Modifying the boot policy always reboots the blade attached to it. So we're gonna go ahead and launch the KVM console now so we can see that reboot happen. Let's see there. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, virtual media for the ESXi ISO, click at image, browse to my ISO, and connect it. At this point, the blade is being reconfigured based on the boot policy change. So almost done there, it's gonna reboot. And we're going to tell it to boot into the installer. Hit enter there. This section is sped up for time purposes. Obviously it has to load some modules here to run the setup. Those nice dots, dot, dot, dot. Once we get to the uh, storage selection, um, we should be able to see the, the newly zoned and provisioned LUN that we did in parts one and two. Uh, we should be able to select that and then go ahead and install ESXi on top of that storage device. You're gonna see it here, right here. And there's our NetApp LUN. We're gonna select that and hit enter and ESXi is going to install. This will take a few minutes. I believe this portion is sped up. Yep, there we go. <laughs> it's gonna go ahead and reboot the server now. Yeah, you don't need to worry about disconnecting that uh, virtual media. It's gonna automatically disconnect. You can see that check mark go away there. Upon reboot. And here we are with the system rebooting. Let's just go splash screen. And the hypervisor is loading. So obviously, after the hypervisor is loaded successfully, There'll be some standard ESXi configuration procedures you need to complete. Uh, you know, your basic uh, IP ma management IP, 
selecting the interfaces or the adapters you're going to use for that management interface, uh, DNS settings, uh, host name, and then I always like to test those. There's an option to test in that menu. I always like to test to make sure those are working properly. There we go, and everything is up and running. So hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, please feel free to provide any feedback on the channel or the blog post. Or you can send it to me directly. Thank you very much for watching. We welcome your feedback.